Okay. Bismillah, Bismillah. Ready, guys? Okay. All right. Guys, guys, come in the front. Come in the front. Come in the front. Everybody come in the front so I can see you guys. Come. Okay. Huh? Why are you scared? Okay, somebody, this kid is scared, his dad is not here. So, dad, if you're here, he's, he, this kid is waiting for you. Okay, over there. Your dad's <laughs> Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Now, before we get started today, shh, no more talking, guys. Last day, you guys should see this very, very carefully. Next Saturday, if I don't have your card, show me your card. If I don't have this next Saturday, then you will not be getting your gifts the following Saturday. What is following Saturday? Following Saturday is the graduation. So the last day you have to turn in the card is next week. Now, what if you don't have full all eight stars? Are you not going to get anything? Nope, that's not true. You will still, uh, you will still get gifts. Okay, but obviously people who have eight stars, they will get a special gift. All right, so make sure next Saturday is our last class, and then the following Saturday is graduation. All right, one more thing about parents. I hope parents are checking their email. Uh, if you guys want uh, Salah Star shirts for yourself, inshallah, please uh, follow the instructions on the email, okay? We have our last day to order the shirts are tomorrow, is tomorrow, so... Um, Huh? I know, I know, sorry. All right, so we're going to start the program. Is Mustafa here? Mustafa, come. So Mustafa will just start by recitation of the Quran. Everybody quiet. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alam nashrah laka sadrak wa wada'na anka wa izrak allazi anka dadahrak wa rafa'na laka dhikrak fa innama al-usri usra innama al-usri usra fa iza farakta fa nasub wa ila rabbika fargab Very good, very good. Here, two candies for Mustafa. All right. So today, what year are we in? 9 A.H. I always ask this question every week. Oh, you guys already know the question. What does 9-A-H mean? I know you know. Okay, no, if you say that, I'm not going to call on you. All right, you tell me. Nine years after Hijra. Very good, very good. All right, now, next question. How many people attended the family night last Saturday? Huh? Who's, oh, oh, what's going on? Come. Shh. All right. Oh, oh, go back, go back. All right. What, uh, who attended family night? So I'm, I'm going to ask a question. Imam Jawad was here and he said, Shh. He mentioned that in the Quran, there are four stories about who? Different people. Let's see how many people remember. Is, was it mother, daughter? Was it brother, sister? What was it? He mentioned four stories about two uh, relationships. All right, let's get a boy here. Only raise your hand if you know the answer. Shh. Okay, go, Fawaz. Very good, very good. Father, son. Father, son stories. So today, today we're just, today the entire Salah Star is just one story. And that story is, the father was Kaab and the son was Abdullah. Whose name is Abdullah here? Any Abdullahs? 
All right, any? All right. So, guys, who's talking here? Shh. See, girls are quiet. Guys, who is talking? All right, good, good, good. All right, so, 50 age. By the way, what does it mean, 50 age? 50 age. So, the father who is Kav, he told this story to his son, 50 age. So what does that mean? 50 age. What is 50 age? 50 years after Hijra. Now the next question is, how old was the Prophet ﷺ at 50 age? Raise your hand. Shh. How old was Prophet Muhammad? Let's see a girl. How old was Prophet Muhammad ﷺ at 50 age? No one's raising their hand. All right. How old was Prophet Muhammad ﷺ at 50 age? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, oh, one girl is raising her hand. Yes. Huh? What? 204? 104? Is that the shh, is that the right answer? 104. Shh. 104 years old. Was the prophet Jesus 104 years old? All right, let's get a boy. Uh, okay, Hosefa. What? He wasn't? Very good. He wasn't alive. How can... He wasn't alive. I mean, okay? So, that was just a trick question. Okay. So, prof, the, in, the, in 9 AH, there was a battle of Tabuk. And this... I'm going to share with you a story. And this is the longest story in the Sira. So, no more real slides, just focus here. The longest story in the seer. Are you guys ready for it? Okay. Okay, this is what happened. Everybody pay attention. If I hear noise, I'm just going to stop. Alright, so this is what happened. Who's making noise? I feel like somebody's making noise, but I don't see anybody talking. At the back, brothers and sisters, please cooperate here. All right, so the longest story, everybody listen. So, Battle of Tabuk. So, what happened was, in 8 AH, the Muslims conquered Makkah, right? So, they remember the Prophet ﷺ came back to the Makkah, and how was he sitting on the camel? Like this? Or some, how was he sitting on the camel? How was he sitting on the camel? Stand up, stand up. He's, he's going to show us. He's going to show us. How was the Prophet Sallallahu sitting on his camel? He was sitting like this. He was sitting like this. And what does that mean when you're sitting like this? Huh? Humbleness. Very good. Mashallah. You guys are paying attention. All right. So this is what happened. What is going on here? Oh. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Shh. Guys, 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 guys. Shh. Okay, 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 that's it, that's it, that's it. Guys, pay attention. Focus here. Guys, look here. Look here. Shh. All right. So this is the story. Guys, ready? So. Shh. All right. It's okay. It's just a balloon. Okay. So there was this big battle that was coming up. Shh. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Guys, guys, guys. Balloon is over. That's it. That's it. Who, again, we're turning it on? Yeah. Okay, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, you know, okay, I have an idea. If, if you guys don't stay quiet, because there, I, I told you, right, an uncle is about to get married here. So if we don't finish by, let's say, 2 o'clock, 
no stickers, no stars, okay? I'm serious. And that uncle also, he's the one who gives the stickers. All right, so if we hear one more noise, you guys are going back without anything. Fine? Deal? Quiet. Shh. Now I should not hear any other voice except for mine. Bismillah. Even if you hear any balloon or anything, you just focus here. All right. Bismillah. All right, so the story. Big, big, big battle coming up. All right. 30,000 people are getting ready to fight the Muslims. So what does the Prophet ﷺ do? He makes an announcement. He tells all the Muslims, get ready. We have to fight. 30,000 people are getting ready. This is like the biggest, biggest battle that we have to get ready for. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he gives the Muslims how many days? 10 days to prepare. You guys, all everybody has 10 days to get ready Buy your camel, buy all the stuff that you need, and you're going to get ready. We're going to get the battle, all right? So all the Sahabas, they start getting ready. They start packing their suitcases, or uh, they purchase their camels, they take some food with them, and they're all ready to go. Now, amongst them was this very, very nice companion. His name was Kaab, right? So this story... Kaab is telling his son many, many years later. So think of it as if I'm saying I'm Kaab and I'm telling the story. So Kaab says this. Kaab said, I heard the Prophet ﷺ tell us to get ready for the battle. And he gave us 10 days. So what did I do? I said, um, ah, I'll start preparing tomorrow. So then nine days are left. Then he said, um, I'll start preparing tomorrow. Eight days left. Then he said, uh, I'll start preparing tomorrow. And he's a good person, by the way. Very, very good person. But he kept delaying, delaying, delaying until one day was left. Guess what he did? Still delay. He's like, ah, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow. Then the Muslims started to leave for the battle. He's still delaying. He's like, um, you know what I did? I said, I said to myself, you know what, I'll catch up even if they're gone. I'll quickly get my camel, will be fast enough, I'll just quickly go catch up. And he kept delaying, delaying, delaying until he realized, too late. Now I can't even catch up to them. They're already gone. And so all the Muslims, they had gone to a place called Tabu. And guess what happened? When the, when the Muslims went to Tabuk and they were getting prepared for such a big battle, do you think there was a lot of fighting? No. You know what happened? The other people, they never even showed up. And so the Muslims basically won without fighting. Who remembers there was another battle we talked about where the Muslims won without fighting? If you make noise, then I'm not going to ask questions. Just raise your hand. There was another battle that the Muslims won without any fighting. How many people remember that? You tell me. Battle of? Battle of Taqwa. Nope, there was no battle that we... Yes. yes. Battle of Trench. Very good, very good, very good. Alright, there was a little bit of fighting, but Allah just gave them victory. Alright, so then what happened was, the Muslims started coming back. Alright? So the Prophet wasallam, he had a habit. Whenever he came back from a, a, a trip, he had a habit. What was the habit? The habit was the first place he would go to is the masjid. He loved the masjid, right? So he used to come to the masjid and he used to pray two rakah. And then when he came back, he basically sat down and he waited for some people to come. And, you know, because a lot of people, so Kaab was not the only person who didn't go. There were some other people that did not go, but they were, they were kind of like known to be not really good people, right? Kaab was one of the better ones. So all these other people who did not go, they came to the Prophet wasallam and they started making excuses. Ya Rasulullah, my leg was hurting. What other person would say, Ya Rasulullah, my hand was hurting. Ya Rasulullah, I had a headache. And they all made excuses. Then it came time, Kaab said, you know, there were like 80 people in front of me, and they all made excuses. Then it was my turn to go in front of the Prophet Now, Kaab was actually a poet. He could have made a really nice story. 
But what did he do? Now this was very difficult for him because he said, if I, didn't, if I don't make an excuse, Rasulullah will be really angry with me. So he's thinking to himself, what should I do? He saw some people had already made excuses and they lied. But what should he do? So you know what he did? Kaab said, should, did he lie or did he say the truth? Kaab said, I went to the Prophet and I said the truth. I said, Your Rasulullah, I was totally fine. I had the money. I was fit. I was feeling good. But I still didn't join you. And Rasulullah said, fine, go. He wasn't really, Rasulullah wasn't really happy with that. But he said, okay, fine, go. Then Kaab went back, right? And then some other people came to Kaab and said, you're such a fool. Don't you see all these ki- all these people, they lied and they got away with it. Why didn't you just make up a story? And Kaab said, he was thinking, oh my God, did I do the right thing? He's thinking, thinking, and he's, he then gets ideas. You know what? Maybe I should go back to Rasulullah and make up a story. But then Kaab said, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to ask, were there any other people who also said the truth or, you know, so the people said, yeah, there were two other people, that's it, two other guys, that's it. So Kaab said, okay, you know what, as long as there were two other people, you know what, that gave him strength. He's like, you know what, I'm not going to make him an excuse, I'm just going to stay strong. And by the way, very important lesson, you should always have good friends, right? So when there's nobody else out there who's not doing the right thing, it gets very difficult to do the right thing. But even if you have one or two people who are doing the right thing, it becomes very easy. So he looked up to them. Then what happened? So you see, no show, prophet's habit upon returning, and he said, I spoke the truth. Good friends are very important. Now, just because he said the truth, does, he, does it mean that he's not going to get some kind of a punishment or some kind of, you know, so prophet did still want to do something, right? So he got a command. And he, Prophet ﷺ told all the people in Medina, what was the punishment for these three people? The punishment was, what do you guys think? Did they get like whipped or did they have to pay a fine? What, what do you think is the punishment? Let's take some guesses. What do you think is the punishment? They made them pay extra, mm, that's a good guess. What do you think is the punishment? What do you think? He made them do maybe like work, you know, volunteer work. You know what the punishment was? It's okay. Well, that's, 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 we don't have time. We don't have time today. So, shh. the punishment was the Prophet ﷺ commanded all the Muslims, you guys cannot talk to Kaab. Nobody in the entire city is allowed to talk to Kaab and also the two other people. Do you think that's a bad punishment? Some of you will be like, okay, that's fine. I don't need to talk to people. I'll just go on my laptop. There was no laptop back then. There was no internet. Nothing. So now that was a punishment. They could not talk to to Kaab. So Kaab said, nobody would talk to us. And you know, he would say salams to people. Nobody would respond. He would even say salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would look the other way, and it started feeling really, really bad. And you know, the other two people, they got so depressed, they would not come out of their home. They would just sit at home and cry, cry, cry. But Kaab would always try to go to the masjid, pray, and still always try to say salams to people. But nobody would respond. Guess how long this happened? Two not two years. For, for, for 50 days. 50 days is how many months? How many, how many months? One month and 20 days. Very good, good. One month and 20 days. For one month and 20 days, nobody talked to Kaab. So Kaab said that one day, after 50 days, I woke up in the morning and I prayed Fajr. And then after I prayed Fajr, 50th day at Fajr, I saw this person riding a, on a horse and he was yelling, he was yelling, Cobb, 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 good news, good news, good news. 
And Cobb became happy. He knew some good news is coming. And he knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala probably forgave him. And so you know what happened? There was a whole ayah, because we have no we don't have much time. I'm just telling you guys, this ayah was revealed in Surah Tawbah. Okay, what number is Surah Tawbah? What number? So you know like Fatiha is one, Baqarah is two. What number is Surah Fatiha? Girls, girls. Anybody? All right, red hijab. Huh? Ten? Nine. Very good. You guys know your numbers. That's very good. What's another thing that's very unique about Surah Tawbah? No other surah has it except for Surah Tawbah. Good, good. If you make noise, we're not calling on you. Yes. Very good. This is the only surah you don't say Bismillah or Manarim before. All right. So this surah was revealed. This ayah was revealed. And Allah basically forgave the three, okay? It says, forgave the three who were left behind. What was the first thing Kaab did when he, heard the, when he heard the good news? He went and he did sajda. Sajda of shukr. Guys, when you hear a good news, it's not necessarily that you have to do it, by the way, but Kaab did it. And he went on the ground and he did sajda. All right. It's okay. All right. And then he ran to the masjid. Okay. This is also very, very interesting. Short story. He runs to the masjid and then everybody is sitting there and the Prophet is sitting there. And he enters. Now it's been 50 days. Nobody has said salam to him. So he enters the masjid and he's looking. He's looking. And nobody is really like welcoming him. And he feels a little out of place. So there was this Sahabi Talha. Talha got up and he said, Kaab, come in. And he kind of welcomed him. And Kaab said, you know what? I can never ever forget that. Talha was so nice to me because I felt like I wasn't welcomed here. But Talha welcomed me and then I felt so good. So, and that was the way the story ended. So very quickly, what are two lessons? One story, one true story I want to tell you guys. When I used to teach Sunday school, I remember this very, very clearly. There was this girl that came into my class, maybe like two months into when the semester started. And you know, she was a new girl, so she, she, you know, she didn't know anybody in the class. So she would, you, in the first few days, she would always sit by herself. And then, just two or three weeks later, I saw that she stopped coming to school. You know why? Because none of the other girls, they never, ever, ever went to her and said, Come on, welcome, you can be my friend. No, nobody came to say salam to her. And she got so bored and she felt so weird, she left school. So we learn from the story about Kaab and Talha and we also learn from the story, when you see somebody new in your class, or when you see that you have all your friends and one person is just sitting by themselves, you always try to... Welcome them. That's one lesson. And then the last lesson for today is the prophet and the old lady. This is, a, this is a very quick joke. One time there was this old lady. She came to Rasulullah and she's like, Ya Rasulullah, I have a question for you. Um, I can't remember what was the question. She said, Can, uh, what do I have to do to get to Jannah? Something like that. So the Prophet ﷺ wanted to joke with her. You know what he so told her? He told her, sorry, old lady, old people cannot go to Jannah. So she started crying, what? Old people can go to Jannah? That's not, that's not fair, that's not fair. And she, 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 she started crying. So the Prophet ﷺ said, relax, 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 relax. When you'll go to Jannah, you'll become young again. Why am I telling this story? Because the Prophet ﷺ, even when he used to joke with people, was he saying a lie? No, even when he was joking, he would always say the truth. So we learn from the story of Kaab that you should always say the truth. And then the last uh, thing is the homework. You know what, homework, we'll just send you an email. So we're gonna, uh, today we want to do quick Q&A because again, we have a nigga, so can Muzammil come up? Muzammil, where are you? All right, Muzammil is going to come, he's going to say Surat al-Asr, and he was also going to recite the Salawat, or the Rushrib. All right, let's go. Shh. He needs help? Okay, you're going to help him. Go. Uh, well,
Well, uh, sir. In the 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 إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواتوا صوب الحق. And I need one more person for salawat. Who wants to do salawat? Hurry, come, come. You have you done it before? Huh? Come, come, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up, hurry up. And we're gonna end salawat. Hurry up, hurry up. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. Alright, salam alaikum. Get your stars and stickers.